Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Agar Maps overview and tutorial for the new version of Agar Maps that has been launched by Manitoba Agriculture in February 2025. In this video, I'll show you a few uh, of the new highlights and features of the new program. So generally, the program looks very similar to the uh, current or the old version of Agar Maps. Many of the, the tools are have the same functionality. Uh, there's a few new ones that I'll show you in a little bit, but overall things look uh, quite similar. So uh, your general zoom in and zoom out buttons and the home button takes you to this view of southern Manitoba. Uh, one new feature is the uh, uh, previous and next uh, extents. You can go back and forth to uh, keep, your, keep track of your position a little better. And again, there's the location tool on your cell phone that uh, will help find your location. Uh, the coordinates uh, bar in the bottom here, which you can also switch back and forth uh, between uh, latitude, longitude, or UTM is another option in the new version. Um, the one big improvement is the um, search function, whether that's for a, a place uh, within Manitoba or a lake or RM, a bunch of different options there, but they're restricted to Manitoba, so it can... Uh, uh, reduce the, the results that are returned. The quarter section search is a little simplified as well. Uh, you can search either um, in drop-down format, uh, as I'm showing here, or you can also enter in the full uh, full text as uh, in the past. So that should um, eliminate some of the, the keying in of, uh, of text to make things a little simpler. And similarly with uh, the river lot system. Uh, a little bit more of a streamlined approach to uh, selecting your your different uh, area of interest. So moving on here, I'll kind of be flipping back and forth between some of the uh, the data and the tool content. Uh, so uh, one of the main reasons for the AgriMaps program is to uh, show our soil survey um, data. And much of that is uh, similar to the uh, existing version of AgriMaps. Um, there's a few new RMs that have been collected and uh, reported for detailed soil survey. So you'll see those in this new version. One thing I'll point out, and as we go through this, is um, the different layers are scale dependent. So they may not uh, appear at every scale just uh, because they're big data sets and could take a long time to load up. So in this case, you'll see that the soil survey uh, is grayed out at this point. And also remember that um, as I zoom in here, the, just because one of these group layers is turned on doesn't mean that your information will appear because you always need the, uh, the higher level of the higher grouped um, title there turned on. So I can expand that and it brings up the same types of uh, soil survey information that you're used to seeing in the past, uh, whether it's the soil series names or even more and the, the labels also will will appear and disappear depending on the, the level of zoom that you're at. One of the um, most popular, most commonly used uh, layer here is the dryland agricultural capability layer and grouping. There's a bunch of new uh, options within the Agri Maps, the new Agri Maps program. You can uh, adjust the transparency individually for, for every which layer. So. Uh, depending on what you're looking at or what your um, end goal is, you can experiment a little bit more with that. There's also a whole bunch of different options. If you want to drill down deeper into the data, you can uh, set filters and uh, as detailed or as, as simple as you want. So in this case, if we just want to search a capability of class 3, for example, we can just hit that um, button there and depending on your transparency here, but you can see that it's filtered that out for you. So another option you can have if you want to see some of that information in a table format is you can uh, add that to the table and uh, bring up the table in here. So a bunch more options to get um, 
more highly detailed information or more specific information if that's what you're after and you can also export this as well some of the other functions uh, that are newer in in this version um, is uh, there's a layer for the soil temperature and uh, moisture so our Manitoba Egg Weather um, program has a series of weather stations across Agro Manitoba and for each one of them um, all you have to do for these layers and a few others throughout this program is if you click on each one of these individually it will bring up a window showing the, the different temperatures at the different uh, layers of depth and also your soil moisture. So um, similar concept for the um, uh, current weather conditions under the uh, agriculture folder and they are in here if I turn those on and turn off my other soil temperature and moisture you can bring up the um, the information in that uh, manner as well to find the the current weather conditions at each one of our weather stations I should point out too going back to the um, uh, some of the soil survey uh, layers if I just turn those back on again I'll just highlight the fact that um, if you click on each one of these individual polygons you can bring up the um, the more uh, detailed explanation um, just uh, in addition to the labels and also there's a there's several links here to click to follow or to uh, investigate exactly what what all this information means moving on from the soils um, in the agriculture folder which I just showed you some of the Manitoba uh, content there's also some new layers from agriculture and agri-food Canada and uh, one of the most or one of the interesting ones in here is they uh, annually publish a crop inventory um, layer so this one the most recent one available now is 2023 so you can turn that one on and for any one of these layers to uh, see the legend you can either launch it from this button here or go up to the top here and that will also launch the the legend but so in here you can in, uh, take a look and see what crops have been grown and moving forward we hope to update that with with new information as it uh, comes on board another newer layer um, with some lidar information or elevation is what's called this uh, shaded land form and I'll just give that a minute or two to load up and uh, some of these are pretty big data sets so they can take quite a bit of time to bring up uh, originally You'll notice for this layer and for some of the other layers as well that uh, there's not always complete comprehensive coverage across Manitoba or in particular Agro Manitoba. So you will see some of these um, layers have information for, for some areas and others don't. So just keep in mind that um, the um, in order to keep track of, of where you're at, you can always make sure that the, the top layer is turned on for the group that you're looking for in this case a shaded landform and uh, to make sure that your scale dependency is uh, or you're zoomed into a level that you can actually see this so for the shaded landform layer uh, you can see that um, it gives you kind of a topographical uh, depiction of the land surface so clearly it shows the the major uh, features like the the river valleys <clears throat> It also shows you some of the finer um, in-field features, uh, whether they're you know tiny knolls or or depressions. So it can be pretty helpful for um, getting an idea of, of uh, local topography or, or drainage across the field. And you can see in, in certain areas that the um, the level of detail is is fairly complex. And while I'm on this layer, I will point out one of the newer tools that we have here it's called the elevation uh, profile and what it does is you can after you click the uh, draw uh, tool here you can just simply click a line or it can be a complex line if you want and uh, what it'll do is it'll generate the uh, the elevation for you uh, you can change the settings right now it's set to meters but we can change that to feet if you want and uh, it'll 
very clearly show you the the highs and lows of an area so that can be uh, uh, super useful as well going back to the uh, layer here and we will turn the shaded layer off for now uh, one of the common questions we've had in the past is about the date of the imagery so now we have an ability to do that so if we turn on uh, the imagery layer just as it says there and you'll notice again um, just as this uh, loads up here but there's only certain levels of zoom that that the um, the layer will work on so in this case we're zoomed out too far it's grayed out if i zoom in a little bit more it will uh, come to life, so to speak, and all, all you have to do is click on the map and it'll tell you the date of the satellite image. So in this case, uh, April 15th, 2023, and you will notice that a lot of these areas have quite small pockets. So there is a there's a big variation of updates. It's not necessarily on an RM basis or regional basis. So that gives you some idea of the, of the date of the imagery. Some other new layers in the new Agar maps are some um, more broad or generalized uh, satellite imagery. And many of these are, depending on the time of year, but they can be updated on uh, uh, a weekly basis or sometimes even more frequently than this. Right now in the heart of February, we're showing all snow cover there, but in the growing season, you can use the, the natural color or the uh, infrared the agriculture layer is a similar uh, layer to the infrared in, in that the the best growing vegetation shows up as a, a bright green whereas in the traditional uh, infrared it shows up as as the reds and the dark pinks so those are some layers that you can check out in order to see some general trends across across your fields going on to look at a few more of the tools here uh, one of the new features in the new agar maps is there's a option to add your own information if you have an arcgis online or agul account you can add some of your own layers or you can add any layer that's been shared publicly online with any user um, across the world so that's one option there's um, another option where you can add uh, some Google Earth file, files in the, in the form of a KML. Or if you have your own shape files uh, or GPS files, you can add those as well. There's a few restrictions in terms of size, but uh, adding those can um, put your information that you've collected or others have collected right into the Agar Maps format. The... Um, Measure tool is very similar um, to the uh, to the previous version of Agar Maps. So, uh, simply clicking and drawing, uh, you can get your acre counts accordingly. There's a coordinate conversion tool if you're um, trying to switch between latitude, longitude, or UTM. There is also a, a new bookmark feature. So, if you have commonly uh, viewed areas you can bookmark those and those will stay on the on the device that you've created them on they're not unique to any kind of account that you've um, um, or that there is no account for you personally so they're saved on your own local device print button is very similar to the last version as well there's a bunch of different options that you can select um, one of the ones that I'll point out that we commonly get questions on is if you turn on the show print area feature you can select whether you want the entire um, screen printed or if you want to maintain a current map scale so it, it shows you which which option you've got selected so that your um, your print results accordingly and then to print you just hit the print button and it will show up in your in your results the um, best place for other information or help is in this info dialog. There's a description on, on each one of the tools and it also tells you where to um, uh, search for the sources of some of the information layers that I uh, have shared previously. 
If you have any questions or comments, uh, the best way to get a hold of us is at the uh, email address uh, select, uh, selected here, agriculture at gov.mb.ca. And uh, we can address your questions and uh, get back to you. I will point out to uh, a few of the very uh, brief differences between the desktop version and the mobile version. And I'll just bring up the mobile version here to give you a little bit more of an idea of what I'm talking about. Just to um, show you a few of the different things that you might encounter or might uh, come across. So most of the tools, except for a couple of them, are, are exactly the same in the, um, in the mobile version. Uh, in order to save some of the screen space, it will look a little bit different, so it takes a little bit of time just to get your bearings. But in this case, um, in order to save space on the mobile screen, you can click the location search here. And on your phone, you'll just have to drag these windows up and down to give yourself physically more space in order to see and, and enter the information that you're, that you're looking for. So that's uh, basically some of the, um, the differences or the way the, the mobile app works. I will point out um, for one of the things that you may come across in the um, desktop version, obviously there's so many different uh, screen sizes and types of devices available that um, it makes it a bit of a challenge to make everything work and look um, similarly across different sizes of devices. So um, some users may notice that some of your uh, windows may appear quite big or disproportionately big and maybe sometimes even to the point of um, not being able to see the full extent of the windows. So one thing you can try is you can go up into your browser settings here and you can experiment a little bit with your zoom levels. You can see that as I zoom in, clearly everything is getting bigger and to the point where it's uh, being a, uh, getting a little bit unusable. So that's one thing that you can uh, try if your screen format is not kind of showing the, the same general um, look as, as what I'm showing on my screen here. If that doesn't uh, solve your problem, um, you can also go to your display settings and I'm on a window Windows computer here, but it will be similar on other um, devices as well. If you need to, you can also experiment with some of your uh, screen resolution. That's another thing that you may that may help you if you're encountering some problems and the zoom level as well. Other than that, we hope you enjoy the new program. And like I said, if you have any um, questions or comments, please uh, contact this email address and we will be happy to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching.